So, before the beginning of this video, I want to tell a little story. Once in a while, I stumbled upon some projects that I thought it would be a 30 minute project. But it turns out to be more like a one, one week, one month project. And it always seems that I'm just about to succeed. I believe some of you might have the exact same experience. And I know it happened to the 8-bit guy too because yeah, that's what happened to the moon base arcade. Uh, what's that called? Cocktail table, yes, that's it. So, this motherboard is definitely one of them. And the problem is very interesting and I just cannot figure out why. So I decided to make a video about it. So first, let's boot it up. So what you are looking at here is a standard Windows XP. Let me close this first. Windows XP English version, so respect three installation with well a few programs that I added. But other than that, it's quite a clean installation. And there's nothing actually nothing fancy with this computer. It's just like standard operating system, standard hardware. I've got more like advanced or like exotic builds with AGP graphics, like hyper threading, Pentium Force, like maxed out XP machine, but this one ain't one of them. So the issue I want you to focus here is the OpenGL support. Now the Graphics output is a standard Intel 810 or 810 graphics controller, which is basically the north bridge of the motherboard. This is the first generation of integrated graphics of Intel chipset. Back then, there was no like core graphics, which is integrated into the CPU itself. It's more like chipset graphics. So the graphics core in this chip is the i752, which is the successor to the famous i740, aka the only graphics chip that Intel produced, that is a standalone graphics chip that Intel produced before ARC. And what I want you to focus here is that there is actually a driver for the integrated graphics. Many people think that there's like no driver for the integrated graphics because they are like pretty standard chips and if you install Windows, there's a great chance that Windows already has the graphics driver built in. However, when you open this here, which is, this is basically the OpenGL extension viewer, which is basically the equivalent of DXDIC or DirectX Diagnosis, uh, but it's a third-party program. It's not provided by Microsoft. This one is provided by Microsoft, and you can see that it's Direct9 compatible, which is fine. This is I built this computer to get like the like average like PC experience of the early 2000s. So. Yeah, it's basically uh, standard stuff, but if you click test direct 3D, and yeah, it's nothing fancy, just a rotating box. Yes. And Direct 3D 8. Rotating box again. Nothing fancy.
and directory deny. Which shows basically flawlessly again. Now, the problem is when you do it with OpenGL, you go to test and you say rendering test. And you notice that the frame rate drops by a huge margin. And it only passes the OpenGL 1.1 compatibility test at a very low FPS. And that is because the driver for this, which is the integrated driver for the Windows XP, it is the GDI generic driver, which stands for Graphics Device Interface, aka the software renderer that is built into Windows XP. And you can really see it when you run this small program called Miniverse. It's actually something that I wrote myself. Yeah, you know, it's a <laughs> very obviously a Minecraft clone. And it shows the chunk borders and it's running really slow. And if you free the mouse and open the task manager, you can see that although it's rendering like dog slow, it is actually consuming 100% of CPU time. I actually bought this motherboard with multiple different CPUs, multiple different Pentium 3s, and I can see the frame rate scale almost linearly with the CPU performance. Let me exit first. That means the rendering is definitely done in software. And the OpenGL extension viewer confirms this by saying it does not support OpenGL hardware accelerated. <laughs> Maybe it should be acceleration? I don't really know. And here you can see it's like pretty poor extension support. And this is pretty much expected, so for now it's pretty much expected. However, this is all the drivers I can find for the chipset. And these two are from the Intel official website. This is the English version, this is like the multi-language version, but they are all the same version. When I want to install them, they gave me a very interesting prompt. Let me see if I can install it just now yes it will give me a very interesting prompt of a newer graphic driver already installed that means the included microsoft driver is actually two versions newer than the latest driver listed on the intel official website what's more important is that even though i ignore that message and install this driver or any other drivers, I don't get OpenGL support. I can get DirectX support though, because I think most of games back then are actually written with DirectX instead of OpenGL, except a few games like Quake, I think they use OpenGL, a few games by its software. So I think this was not a big deal back then. People generally don't game on integrated graphics. I think it's understandable, but this means that there might be a great potential in these chips. I vaguely remember that I got it running on an IBM computer with almost exactly the same processor, almost exactly the same motherboard and everything. I got it running on an IBM computer and I was able to double the frame rate of Miniverse. Now this is, again, this is a terrible program, but I find it to be a very good indicator of OpenGL graphics performance. So I, I wrote it so badly that the lack of optimization means that the frame rate is almost only dependent on the graphics performance of the graphics chip, which is hilarious, really. So you can see wherever I go, the frame rate is bad. 
if I fire up and uh, the the chunks get like despawn and the frame rate goes up and then when I drop back down it's like miserable again. So if I if I disable the this disable the fog, I actually can get better frame rate. However, it also introduced a rendering bug. That is basically all blocks that are very close to me are rendered incorrectly. I, I think this is a lack of perspective correction or something. So, yeah, and that part is that. But the key takeaway is this is not hardware accelerated. I can totally uninstall the driver. Wait, I think I have a great way to demonstrate it. I'll just restart the computer really quick. As you can see, we are in save mode now. You can see that some part of the screen is actually like cropped off. This is because of my capture gear. It's not doing a great job at centering the screen. I don't want to just record a screen, which would look terrible. And one key feature of like save mode is you can see that we can have better performance in save mode, and I'll explain why later. The one key feature of save mode is it generally disables all the drivers that you install, all the third-party drivers that you install, and only use like the very basic driver, and which means it falls back to almost a hundred percent of times to CPU-driven graphics. And we can see a increasing performance because I think it also defaults to 640 by 480 resolution. Although my OBS is probably upscaled in that to 800 by 600 now. Yeah, so 640 by 480. Maybe I can change that. No, not really. So yeah, th this is basically the thing with all of these drivers. What I haven't tried is different version of Windows XP. And that's because any computer that is new enough in my home that I would be confident to connect them up to the internet does not have a optical drive bay in their chassis. Basically, I cannot fit an optical drive into them and I don't have any removable optical burner, which means I will have to use a USB stick to install Windows XP or use another computer. This motherboard does not support USB boot very well. I don't know why, but it just doesn't. Which means I would have to use the only one computer in my home, which is a Windows 7 computer with a CD burner slash DVD burner to burn the CD and run them using the physical CD DVD drive attached to this motherboard. And that will involve downloading the ISO file from the internet on my Windows 10 computer and copying that file to that computer using a USB 2.0 flash drive because that computer does not even support USB 3.0, which is, yeah, you get what I mean. It will be like super slow and this project has taken me like five days straight without doing anything. I think this is one of the problems with such projects. These projects are just like landmines. Basically, you, you stumble upon them and they will give you a bad time because they will take the time away from your more important projects. And in this case, unfortunately, that means the development of the hack computer. Because you always think that you are 10 minutes from success and then you can refocus back to your original project. Which may happen in 10 minutes, but it may happen in 3 weeks. Or probably never. So I decided to just call it a day or call it a project and ask for help from my very supporting viewer 
community. So if any of you know what is going on with this motherboard, of, or if you, any of you know how can I get OpenGL working, or actually how did I get this thing working, please tell me because I r did remember although vaguely that I got it working once that I can see a lot more support here and it actually reports the hardware OpenGL functions are enabled or it's like supports OpenGL hardware acceleration and it passes the test with a much higher frame rate. I think one of the potential solutions is just a wrapper to like translate OpenGL call to DirectX call. That may be what I did because I remember I was just throwing everything at it and somehow it worked. But then I installed a better graphics card and that basically the new driver override the old one and I cannot get it back anymore. And I never bothered because I had the better graphics card. But now I want to do it again and I throw like five days straight at it. I cannot get it working again, which is like super weird. So I might throw some wrapper at it and it works, but it can be something else. Maybe I just downloaded a version of the driver that is not included in here, but I think this is basically a complete collection of drivers that you can find on the internet. I spent a lot of time actually to track down these like 6.5.2 and 6.4.1 uh, version of the driver and the 6.6. .6 Basically, all the websites are offering these two drivers because they are obviously the latest. And they don't work. And I actually tried to install this uh, application uh, like driver thing, but this is actually for the IDE controller on the motherboard. So this is not the way to go. So if any of you have any idea, please leave a comment below. I will appreciate that. And I think that's it for this video. Bye-bye.